Hi everyone, it's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back. Thanks so much for joining me today. Today we're going to do our spring gnome, or this is a great time to do um, the spring gnome for a Mother's Day gift. It's fun, it's easy. Um, the kids can join in on this, be a great for the grandmother. Um, you've got your regular full beard, but we are going to do some extra techniques this time. We have our gnome body as constructed for our Easter Bunny gnome, but we're going to make some changes on a few things. So you'll learn some new hand sewing techniques, I think, with the flower. These are not difficult techniques, but mom might need to help if we do have a child um, sewing this. And there's very little machine sewing involved on this. And we're just going to take these steps nice and slow, and I hope you'll enjoy this video today. He is a sweet little gnome. He's fun to do, and I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. So if you were... Um, able to order a kit and get your kit from us, then let's start there. Let's see what's in that kit. Now, first of all, you're going to have your kit and your fabrics, and they'll come with your pattern pieces. So, on one side, we're going to have our gnome base as long and our gnome body. And then, if you flip that over, this side is going to have our gnome hat, our flower petals, our leaf our flower center, the flower back, I didn't label that, but your smaller circle is your flower back piece, and I'm going to show you how to cover a piece of cardboard for that, and you're going to have a flower stem also that's going to come out of that, and so there will be some things that you'll need today that are not included in your kit, so you'll need the filling for your gnome, whether you choose to use polyfill, sand, or walnut, or even a combination is fine. You're going to need some polyfill for your flower and also for the nose and a bit of cardboard today. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. I pulled a piece out of my trash, to be honest with you. You just need a small piece for the back side of our flower. You will need your glue gun today and your sewing machine. <clears throat> There are um, a lot of things involved on this one this month, so let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to tell you is let's start with our gnome body. So our gnome body is our basic gnome felt body, and so when you get your kit, you will have your piece in there. You're going to have a little pantyhose piece for your nose. You're going to have your beard. You will have your flower center, your flower petals, your flower leaf and stem, the hat, which is so precious for your gnome, and also the felt for your gnome, okay? So let's get that felt piece out. We can put everything else aside right now. So once you've, um, if you want, you can make another copy of this so that you can cut from that copy. And then it'll, you're just going to lay that piece down on your felt and cut your body pieces out and the big circle for the base. Once those pieces are cut out, I want you to go ahead and let's go to our sewing machine. And what I did was I like to leave the opening for my gnome kind of close to the top because I'm going to fill it and I want everything to run to the bottom. So I'll leave a good, a good, um, like a three inch opening towards the top somewhere, okay? But step one on your sewing is going to back tack, stitch, back tack, skip over our opening, back tack, stitch, back tack. And then once you've got this, um, stitching done, then you're going to place your circle inside your gnome body like this, and you're going to go all the way around and stitch your, your base on. And then once your base is done, you'll have something that looks like this. Your base is then attached, and you'll have your nice opening at the top. So you'll want to just turn this right side out. It's still wrong side right now because you can see we've sewn it. So turn that right side out. Go ahead and put your filling in there, and then we're going to be ready to start on our other pieces of our gnome. Once your filling is in, then I want you to go ahead and um, hand stitch that shut. And it doesn't matter how that looks. It um, can be as neat or tidy as you want or sloppy because we're going to cover it up so you don't have to worry about it. So what we're going to start with is our gnome looks something like this right now, but we're going to transform it into something else. So when you've got your gnome body complete, let's go ahead and start on the body pieces for our gnome today. So the first component is the hat. And I want you to know that the hat pattern that I included for you today is a really large hat. And the reason that I did that is because some people like a lot more fullness and wrinkle and bunch down here. So the longer the hat is, the more bunch and the layers you're going to have right above the nose area. So I particularly... 
I found some students like that big hat and then you know it's all different sizes but I will tell you the hat that's on this one today I don't I have a hard time working with all that fabric so what I do is the pattern has the large one but if you want to cut it down a size I take two inches off of the pattern and so to do that all you would do is just go right around your pattern with um, just a regular ruler is fine and give me a two inch little lift on this and what I do is I just move my ruler and I'm two inch two inch two inch just dot 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 as I go and then when you're done you can just connect the dots oh my goodness this one's not showing up good let's see if this side does yeah there we go we're just going to connect the dots there just like you see and now that has actually shortened my hat quite a bit you can see I'm taking two full inches off the bottom of my hat and so once you've got all your pattern pieces, and like I said, run another copy and cut all of these pattern pieces out because you are going to need them. So the first piece that we'll talk about is your hat piece. So from your really pretty butterfly fabric, you're going to take your gnome um, hat piece and lay it out. And when you cut that, you're going to have a wedge like this, just like you did with your gnome body. And you're just going to lay those right sides together. And I want you to give me a full stitch from the tip all the way down to the bottom, okay? And if you would like, down at the bottom, what I did was I fold these edges back about a quarter of an inch at the bottom and stitch right over that because we are going to go around our gnome just like this and just finger press about a quarter of an inch at the top. And I found that it really behaves nicely just with a finger press. So we can just rotate that and pinch, rotate that and pinch. And then our hat is actually ready and done. So with the hat out of the way, let's now look at our flower center, which is going to be cut from the pink. And I gave you a generous enough piece. So you'll cut your flower center out. You have quite a few petals, okay? Your flower petals looks like this. It's got the little curve and then it's straight across the bottom. Well, this this straight line portion goes across the fold of your fabric so i've given you a nice long piece of purple okay and so if we were cutting those petals out one by one that would mean that our pattern edge is going to go along this fold right here and our curve is going to come across the top right here and i think you have enough in yours to cut maybe around eight and you'll just see how full you want your flower to be this is the portion that we're talking about right here. On this particular one, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six petals, okay? So you can do as many as you would like. There's your pretty pink center. The flower stem that you'll have and the leaf pattern is similar. You're just going to um, take your green fabric, and I want you to cut about a one-inch strip, one to one-and-a-half inch strip along this edge right here, all the way across. Cut that and then put that right sides together and give me a stitch on that. And then once you do, you're going to turn that right side out like this. And it's just going to look like this long tube. And this tube, what we're going to do is we're going to take our pipe cleaner. And I should have included one of those in your kit. Just fold that in half. And that pipe cleaner is going to go inside our stem to give it the stability to stand. Okay? And then your leaf pattern, you'll cut that out of the remaining amount of green fabric that you have. And you'll just run a regular straight stitch around that leaf pattern and turn it right side out as well. I haven't turned this one yet. I'm going to do it a little bit later when we get there. Okay? So those are your different fabric pieces. And once everything's cut out, then we're going to be ready to start sewing. So with our machine, we will do our, um, our stem and our leaf and our hat. And then we're going to pick up with some hand sewing for the next part. So let's get ready for that. So here's my hat. I'm going to put that to the side. It's got the quarter inch pressed all the way up, and I'm just going to set it right there for the time being on there. Here's your flower, I mean your leaf petal. So let's cut the bulk off of the end right here. Just take that out a little. And when you get ready to turn this, this will just turn right side out from the inside. And if you want to give that a little press on the iron, that's fine too. push my point on my little tip here out and you can just run your point turner right around here and give that leaf a little bit of shape. Okay. 
just like that. You've got a leaf is so simple and easy. I hope that you'll use these pattern pieces to embellish some of your other projects too. I'd invite you to do that. And then let's go ahead. Um, it's not hard, but we're going to do some hand stitching now. And it's not my favorite thing to do, but you know what? I really enjoy it on this because you get to bring to life these beautiful blooms just instantly. So let's go ahead and take, I've got my purple pieces already cut. This is my little bit of cardboard for the back of my petal right here. I'm just going to cover that with some of your extra purple and I've got my flower center, this one right here, and my petals. So we're going to go ahead and get started with this. Let's go ahead and do our flower center first if you'd like. This one's super easy. So I'm going to take a double strand of knotted thread. Let's see, I think I got an extra knot. I use nice um, strong thread for this. So I like like Guterman polyester is just what my favorite is for hand sewing because I can usually tug on that and I won't experience um, you know, a lot of breaking. So a double strand and I've got that knotted at the end. And now what we're gonna do is just run a running stitch right along about a quarter of an inch from the edge of this. Um, we're making a yo-yo pretty much is what we are doing, but you don't have to turn your edge back because it won't be exposed. So this is really quick sewing. You just dive in and go. So that's like a quarter of an inch from the edge and going all the way around. And I'm probably going, taking that needle and dragging it through a little less than a half an inch every other stitch there and go all the way around. This is the same technique that we will use on our purple petals when we get to it. Let me see if I can come a little closer there and give you a shot. Just like that. And then when we get to the side where we started, you can see my knots right here. We're just gonna drag this through And with my thread still attached in here, I've still got my thread in here, I'm going to take a little bit of polyfill and I'm going to stuff inside there. And you won't need much. Um, I'll take it like this. I like it nice and full though. So I'm going to just stuff that down in there and pull this thread and then see how quickly that takes shape. Just like that. So let me work with this to get it ready to knot off. And you go ahead and knot this off however you like. I just want to be able to get a knot in there where it's not going to go anywhere. So. Now once you've got all your little gathering stitches in there, you can play with this and make it so pretty. Um, the more even those stitches are separated and pulled on the back side, the prettier it'll be on the front side. So if you make these nice and even, see, then when you turn it around to the front, you get that nice fullness. And so we're going to put this on our flower petals in just a moment. This is our flower center. And it's done. I'm going to set that to the side. And now we're ready to start on our petals. Um, with my petals, I like to have a nice long strand to start with because I keep these linked together. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Now, before you begin stitching your flower petals, I want you to make sure that you've got a nice long amount of thread and you also have your hot glue gun already um, plugged in and ready to go because we're going to be using... This is my own technique that I do, that I sew these together and then I also glue them as I go. It just makes it more manageable for me when I'm getting ready to handle it. So let's go ahead and take our petals. If you want, you can press these in half. You can finger press them or you can take them to the iron and put a nice crease in there. But you may want to press those um, in half. This is what they look like when they're open. And so this is what you're going to have. Remember I told you to put that flat line on the fold and then cut your curve on your raw edges. So when I get ready to start, I am going to just secure this thread right in this one end here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue right there. 
then I know that it's just not going to go anywhere. Now, I'm going to see. This is the right spot, yeah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to run these. And I'm going to run one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to tie it off and I'll show you how we complete the flower. So, six of these petals. Once I approach the end of the petal, that's what it looks like. See how sweet that is. And so once you've got this like this, we're going to put a little glue on this raw edge right here. What that's going to do is it's just going to hold everything in place for you as you begin to go to the next one. It just makes it a little more manageable. And so I just go right inside here, just dab a little on there, right inside those fabric folds. And then what that will allow you to do is to just go ahead and work on the next one without having to worry about this one misbehaving and pulling out. That hot glue will just hold it right in place there. You're going to want to give it a few seconds and let that glue set before you begin st stitching your next petal. But then once it has and you're ready, we're going to repeat this for all our petals. So here we go. Okay, I've got one more to go, so this is my last one, and you can see my glue is setting nicely. I hope this was easy and fun for you, um, because I, I, I do this flower technique a lot. That glue gun will just make all that stuff stay kaput right there. So now we're on our last one. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And so I will begin this the same way, and travel right through. But this time, we're going to knot this off. Um, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just go ahead and in this last petal, go ahead and knot this stitch off. You do it in whatever way you want. And yes, I'm going to put a little glue stick on here too so that it doesn't go anywhere and let that set up. And go ahead and clip that thread and put that needle where you don't forget it because we're going to need it again, I think. So this is what your flower will look like right now. And you can see it's already taken shape without me having to do a whole lot. So it's really pretty already. But see, our center is going to go right inside there like that. And so let's go ahead and start building that flower. Sometimes by the time I've got that part done, I realized that I wanted my flower to be a little bit poofier or smaller or whatever. So if you wanted to go back and make any changes, you can do that now. Um, but this is going to be ready. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of glue here 
these, these, this will be my first petal and my last petal. Then I'm going to just kind of glue those together. Just put a little dot there so that can, that'll hold them together there. So this is my little back piece of cardboard and I need to cover this is what I need to do with my, um, an extra piece of your purple fabric. And so all you're going to do now for this is we're going to lay your purple down and lay your cardboard right on top of it. And then we're going to go ahead and just glue this right over the edge. So I just run a little on this side. And you know that glue sets up so quickly. So just get your finger in there and press it on. glue now remember this is on the back side so it doesn't have to be beautiful we just need that size though in that shape so this is what we end up with because this is going to cover up our flower on the back so what I like to do is just lay our little flower out like this and we're going to just glue that right in the center just like we want so once you've got that just right exactly where you want, you want to just put a little hot glue on there. So let me get my glue gun. I think I'm out of glue sticks in it, so I've got to stick one in there, and then we'll go ahead and um, be right back to put this in. I ended up wanting mine just a little bit um, smaller. So, I bunched it up and I'm gluing it. Now I'm going to just put some glue right on our flower itself, right in the center. And let's go ahead and plop that down in the middle and mash on it. And just let it sit right there and set up. The next portion of our flower that we're going to do is we're going to do our stem. This is so cute. See how cute that is already? Um, we're going to do our stem. And remember I said just go ahead and run your seam across the back of that. And then we're going to insert a pipe cleaner in here. So I'm going to just take the pipe cleaner. I folded the pipe cleaner in half because you'll only need about that much. And I insert the pipe cleaner in. And when I get to the bottom portion right here, I'm going to go ahead and glue gun this shut. And to also keep that fabric in place. Okay. Now you'll notice that this fabric extends further out than your piping does. And so I just want you to scrunch it like this. It just makes it look so cute. So we're just going to scrunch, scrunch, scrunch down on this and then put a little bit of hot glue here. And that's going to make sure that that green fabric covers our pipe cleaner for us. Okay. A little bit there. And then you can go back in and, and just take your um, scrunchies and you do position them like you want. I like it real scrunched up like that. Okay. And then we've got our leaf. Let's go ahead and prepare our leaf. And this leaf, um, what I do with this, this is so simple. I just fold it in half. And you can do this a lot of different ways. But I fold it in half and then I fold these back on themselves. So that you just got a little tuck in your leaf like that. And then once you've got the shape that you want, go ahead and hot glue that in place. Let's do, I think I'm going to run it up here a little bit. And I will tell you, every one comes out different. So if yours doesn't look exactly like mine or exactly like your friends, don't worry about it. But you can make it behave with the hot glue. So there you go. So this little component is ready. I want a, a nicer, deeper little pleat in there. So to do that, I'm just going to run a little bit more glue right down there in that channel. And just give it a little bit more form and body like that. Okay, and I'm like, I can feel that it's warm, so I'll hold on to that just for a second. 
let's go ahead and put our flower together now that it's ready. And so we'll take the flower and turn it over. And what we want to do is cover this in glue and go ahead and put our back piece on. But before we do that, I want to tuck our stem right inside there, okay? So I'm going to tuck my stem. Let's see, is my flower, do I want a particular portion of it? top, bottom, or whatever, because you will want to look and audition the way you want to see this now. I think I want that to be my top, so I'm just going to come in back in here and put some glue in there. Let that sit. And once that's set up, then we want to go ahead and put the back piece on. Now I'm plopping down a generous amount of hot glue on there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to really press on it so that my glue gets into all those crevices and fabric folds. I save my leaf. It kind of goes on towards the end because you'll want to see where your beard is and where your petals are. And so you may want to just position that a little bit later because you know, if we do it now, we might have it in the wrong spot. So this is what you should have. There's your pretty flower so far. I think it's just beautiful. I love all those scrunchies like that. And so we're going to um, be ready to put this all together in just a moment. So let's put our flower petals to the side. And let's put our leaf to the side and work on our gnome nose. Now this month in your kit, what I've done is I've included a little bit of some pantyhose. And so what they are is they're just regular old pantyhose, okay? And I put a decent enough piece in there that I want you to cut a little sliver off the side right here. Just a little sliver like this. Now this is going to be our tie. And the reason I want you to do that is because these two... Um, when you get ready to tie this nose up, if you do it with um, thread or yarn or something like that, it just doesn't hold and work as good as the pantyhose do with the pantyhose. So we're going to um, get a little bit of polyfill to put inside our pantyhose here. And I usually just kind of roll it up. And this is, this is how big your nose is going to be. So you're just going to put as much as you want. If you want a nice full nose or if you want a small nose, this is all up to you. Of course, when I put this polyfill inside the pantyhose, I'm going to pull it really tight. So it is going to shrink up a little. But I think I want my nose about this size. And I'm trying to do this so you all can see. You know, these stretch super easily. So all you're going to do is just stretch it and make it behave for you. If you get this pinched together and you don't have as full a nose as you want, then right now is the time you can scoot some more polyfill down in there. So let me see. If I pull on this like this, I can kind of tell what size my nose is. And I think I want mine to be a little bit bigger than that, so I'm going to put some more in there. And so I'm going to hold these out here. And I try to ball it up because I think it's easier to work with. Cram it down in there. And pull these edges up as tightly as you can because you'll want to take that little sliver that I showed you in the beginning and we're going to just tie this off. I'm going to look at the front and I'm going to make sure I didn't make it too big. That's perfect. That's what I wanted, a nice big one. And so you want to kind of pull on it like this so that you've got something easy to tie to because we can tie right to this. It's almost like working with a balloon, you know? When the balloon gets so full and you're trying to get that latex to tie a knot for you, this is very similar. So I'm going to just do like this and now just tie a regular knot. Once your knot is tied, we're going to really give this a nice little haircut, trim it up. And don't you worry, we're going to put plenty of glue on there so it's going to stay. And now you just want to shape your nose however you want. There we go. Mine's nice and full like that. I'm pleased with that. And so let's put our nose to the side. He's happy and ready. And let's work on our beard. Now with this one, I... Um, have included your beard piece in there and I give you the option you can put the whole solid beard piece on 
when it comes or where it's just straight and full across the top. Here we go, one like this, okay? Or you can cut a little scoop in here. A lot of times when I'll do a nice full nose like this, I like to cut a little scoop out. And so if you do that, just come from the back side and you're just gonna give me a little scoop on there. That's all you're gonna do. But we're ready to go ahead and start gluing him together. So with all our things here and ready to go, let's do it. So our hat, let's go ahead and turn this right side out. I'm gonna just push this point out a little bit with my scissors. I don't want you to do that. Please use a point turner. I can't find mine right now. So you just wanna get that hat tip out like that. And if you need to do any trim ups, let's go ahead and do that. And then here's our gnome body. So with our gnome body in place, let's go ahead and start putting him together. Now, one thing you wanna decide is where you, how you want him to sit. So I've got sand in mine, so sometimes I can just audition different shapes. This guy that I did originally, he's sitting straight up. This one, I might do it a little bit back like this. And so if I do that, then what I'm gonna do is go ahead, you wanna decide, do you want your hand stitch seam in the front or the back? It does not matter. Like I said, we're gonna cover it up. So there's what I want. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my beard on. So you want to audition that and see where you want it. You know, do you want it dragging a little bit? Some people have told me they don't like theirs dragging. So if I gave you too much of a piece, then trim it off so you can make your beard shorter. That's all you want to do. But once you've got that kind of laid where you think you like it, we can go ahead and begin gluing it. So just do a little bit of a dab here and there. And you're, this is not your final gluing. So you just want to hold that in place really. So get it there so that you can go ahead and get your hat on and get your nose attached and all that. Here's our nose that's going to go on next and I'm going to give, um, I'm going to put it on there first. And once I do, I kind of peep around the side to see how far it's sticking out. And so I'm going to lay a huge amount of glue down in here. Now, the reason that I do that is because I know that people will play with this and I don't want them to knock the nose off. So put a nice, generous glob back there and hold it like this. And then when you do that, as it sets up, remember how we had to pull so much fabric in through the center and then tie that knot around there? This way, everything's going to get glued and stay in place so you know that this will last a long time. And once you take your finger off, then you can just reshape your nose however you like. I'm very pleased with the way that is. And so I also know that I need to go ahead and secure my beard now. So any additional glue, this is entirely up to you. You don't need a whole, whole lot of glue at this point. Um, but we just want to hold it on there. And this is what it looks like so far. And you realize that at this point, you can put any type of hat you want on here. So I know like if you are um, a sports fan or maybe you want to give one of these away and you want to put your favorite um, college or professional team fabric, do a hat out of that. That is really cute. Make a flag on your embroidery machine for them to hold. Um, it's just a lot of different things you can do. Let's go ahead and get our hat ready to put on now. Now I'm going to lay that seam across the back. Okay, so this seam is going to go definitely in the back of my gnome, and I just slide it right over like this. And you can already see, as soon as his hat comes on, he just comes to life. It's awesome. Flip this around, and let's work on this back side here. So I'm going to want to go ahead and make sure that my gnome hat doesn't go anywhere by putting some glue right there. And I drag it till it's just, a, just maybe a little less than an inch off the bottom edge of my gnome right here. Okay, And then turn that around. And then you'll wanna go ahead and get his hat ready by, remember I said you're just gonna fold that bottom raw edge about a quarter of an inch. And when you start pulling his hat down like this, then you can shape it and get it just like you want right above the nose. And of course, you've probably already guessed it. We're just going to glue along here. I glue the pleats in even up here so that they stay the way you want them to. And I glue the side right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay. 
I tell you, these gnomes make me happy, y'all. Sometimes when I get it like this, too, this is so perfect. I just love it right there. I will take some straight pins, and you can put them right in there so that you can drop little dabs of glue in your wrinkle sections and so that it stays right where you want it to. These little wrinkles just give it character, and I think that's why I'm so picky about where they fall. And I would probably put a little under the brim here too, just right onto the nose. And now that just stays right in place like that, and you can't even tell that I've done anything. All right. Shake that beard out, and you guessed it. Now we're ready to start placing our flower on here. So we're gonna just take the flower Remember we had this portion at the bottom. I'm just going to bend that just a little bit towards the bottom like this. And you're going to set your gnome down on top of that and glue it. I can't quite get right in my... But I've just bent this just a little. And I'm going to set my gnome right down on top of it, okay? So just put some glue there. And decide where you want him. That looks good to me. And hold that just for a second. Now at this point, guess what? You can glue your flower to your gnome hat if you want to. You can really shape this and do um, anything you want. You can have it going over this way, just straight up. Have it doing whichever, whatever you want it to. I do think that this one, I may do a little bend and glue it right to my hat. And if you're not sure about that, use my little pin trick. Take and put the pin in it. And stick it in place and just take a look at it and see if you like it or not. But I want to go ahead and take the time now. And let me just look at mine so I can get it nice and shaped up and glued in place. So make sure that your flower is attached just like you want it to. I like mine springing out the side like this. So all you're going to do is run that glue off the, the on the bottom of your gnome and on the side of your stem just to make it behave. That glue is just there to make it behave. And then at this point, you can go ahead and decide where you want to put your leaf. Um, you can put your leaf on your hat if you want to. You can put it over here, but I wanted to put mine this time right over here. So I'm going to drop it right in the side here with the... Oh, I'm out of glue again. Let me get a glue stick. I'm going to drop mine right in there, I think. Yeah, I like that. Now, on your side right here, I wanted to talk to you a little bit. I've got an option for you. You can put beads and buttons on here to hang down. If you, oh, my flower petal, I mean, my leaf is backing out on me there, to dangle off the side right here. And those are fun things to do. You could put a little yo yo or a button or a pom pom even on there, just whatever you like. I was not able to mail out some of these things. Believe it or not, it was really hard for me just to get the pipe cleaners for this kit. So um, I've included as much as I can for you there. This is wanting to lean. So let me... This is what I was telling you about um, the little straight pan technique. You can stick that in there so that it will now behave and you won't have to worry about where it's going to go. He is so cute. Almost all the way done. All we've got left to do is just what you're going to do now is your finishing touches. So if there's something that you want to glue in place or whatever, go ahead and make sure that you do that at this point because we are almost done with this. I just want to talk to you just a bit about how I did my buttons and my dangle over here. So on this guy right here, you can see my little dangles right here. I bead a little bit on the side and so I have tons of beads and things. Um, this has some dangles on it right here. I dangled some buttons on there. I dangled some of these on there. You can buy them already, ready to go at your craft stores. And if you want to take a whirl at this, all you need is just whatever beads you want to use. And you'll need the stem that you place the beads on. Looks something like this. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can. And then I just layer my beads on. And what I do is I take this guy and I ram it right up through the tip of the fabric here and just make a little hook. And so you're just going to fold that right back over. And that is what makes this dangle. I'm going to try to get this a little closer to the camera for you. 
See that little dangle? It's just fun. It's got the buttons on there. It's got beads. You can just do whatever you want. You can put anything you want on here. But like I said, a pom-pom is also cute with a little yo-yo. Um, so these are our Mother's Day Spring Gnomes. And I hope you had fun today doing those. And I sure do hope you'll come back and join me again. It's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back.